Amidst such chaos, it's hard to hear the sound, but if we listen closely, we can tell how similar it is to the sound of bombs and shelling. It could even be as dangerous. At least that's the case for Yemen, a country that is expected to run out of water in 10 years. I'm Reem Al Khatib from Salt Podcasting, and you're listening to The Color of Innovation, a podcast on innovation brought to you by the United Nations Development Program. Innovation for development is about disrupting the ways things work or don't and using creative approaches for solving difficult problems that people experience every day. This show brings you inspiring stories of innovation from across the Arab states. UNDP introduces social innovators sharing their inspirations and their ideas, their passions and their projects for changing the world. In this episode, we'll talk with Khaled Al Thabani from Yemen and see how he has used design thinking to tackle the problem of access to clean water that he and his community face. Design thinking is an effective approach because it puts the needs and desires of people facing the most pressing and difficult challenges at the center of the process of creating solutions. In what the UN has called the world's worst cholera outbreak, the International Committee of the Red Cross says Yemen now has one million cases. Khaled lives in Yemen where it is estimated that 2,200 people have died from cholera, and more than 1 million people have been infected with the disease since the outbreak of the epidemic in 2016. The disease continues to spread in what the UN has called the world's worst cholera outbreak in recorded history. Resources in Yemen as cholera continues to sweep across the country, already ravaged by war and drought. Cholera and many other kidney-related diseases are mainly caused by the consumption of contaminated water an act that is very common in Yemen, given that two-thirds of the population does not have access to clean drinking water. Although water has always been a pressing issue in Yemen, the conflict has escalated the problem. Fighting has not only destroyed the already insufficient water infrastructure, but has also increased the price of what has remained of the clean supply. Symptoms of sickness and dehydration have become more and more prevalent within Yemeni households. Khaled and his friends, all mechanical engineers, were determined to find a solution, no matter how small, that could control or prevent the water-related diseases affecting their families and the people around them. After asking around, we found out that there are at least two to three people suffering from kidney diseases in each family. We wanted to know the reason behind such a high percentage of kidney disease. We found out that water is in fact the reason. Around that time, Khaled applied for UNDP's Youth Leadership Program which uses design thinking to explore and accelerate innovative solutions. Coming to the program with some initial ideas about water treatment, Khaled learned about how design thinking could improve his approach. Instead of importing wholesale solutions from other countries with very different contexts, he learned about the process of design thinking, of understanding users more in depth, of generating many possible ideas, of prototyping and getting fast feedback from users all in the name of developing an effective solution for those in need. We created a filter that is affordable to regular Yemenis, keeping in mind that citizens are going through hard financial times. There are no salaries in Yemen, and living conditions are bad. The filters sold in the market are very expensive, and so we decided to create a new filter with minimal functions but high efficiency, so that it can be affordable and effective to the average citizen. And this is the solution Khaled and his team ended up with. The young innovators started designing their filter by making prototypes to test with users. This is an important step in the design thinking process, designing low-cost prototypes to test with potential customers to learn what they like and they don't like about different designs. Just like any good chef will make several versions of a new recipe before finding the right combination of ingredients, Khaled needed to test out a few prototypes to ensure that he would put out the best product. In this way, he was able to change his product before being too committed or investing too much in a final design that wouldn't meet users' needs. Khaled was able to make improvements to his product based on this user testing and feedback. Without making these prototypes, Khaled may have invested heavily into a product that people wouldn't use or like. In order to identify the bugs and weaknesses of the product, I tested out 40 samples. I didn't want to enter the market before I understood its needs and the customer's concerns. The end result was a $100 water filter that operates on solar power, which makes it easy to use if you're living off of the electricity grid. So far, Khaled has sold around 60 filters. Safe Sibai is one of the buyers. 
The spread of diseases like cholera and amoeba made me want to buy a filter. But when I went to shop for one, I found them to be very expensive. Initially, Saif forgot about the need of buying a filter and kept on buying water from purification plants for $50 a month until he heard of Khalid's filter and started using it instead. To be honest, the filter is great. It solves the real problem by reducing the cost and operating it on solar power. Wafa al Iriani, program assistant with UNDP Yemen, gave us more insights about the importance of design thinking. In the Youth Leadership Program, UNDP Yemen focuses on giving training on design thinking method, which is a guide for prototyping and testing solutions for the sustainable development goals. This method contains five steps, starting with observation, ideation, prototyping, testing, and implementing. And it's a problem-solving approach, human-centered innovation. And I think, after this comprehensive training, youth are able to translate their ideas into real projects serving the community and solving the challenges of sustainable development goals. Khalid and his friends would have easily developed a solution that they thought was best, without any user input at the design phase or the prototype testing phase. This may have been faster, but probably not as useful for customers in the long run. Prototypes are often thought of as mistakes, failures. In design thinking, making mistakes is actually one of the best things that can happen. Every mistake is an opportunity to learn. Every new prototype is one step closer to creating the best product possible. With design thinking, the path to success is full of bumps and setbacks, but ultimately, one that gets to sustainable development solutions that work. You've been listening to The Color of Innovation, a UNDP podcast that showcases examples of innovation for development around the Arab states and the world. We hope these stories will leave you feeling inspired and hopeful for our collective future. UNDP supports innovation by introducing new methodologies for doing development differently. Subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts and follow our journey through UNDP's website, undp.org forward slash innovation. That is undp.org forward slash I-N-N-O-V-A-T-I-O-N. This show is produced by Salt for UNDP Innovation in the Arab States.